This is John Spiewak with Spiewak Preservation Consultants, and we're here at the 34th District Courthouse in St. Bernard Parish in Chalmette, Louisiana, just outside New Orleans. This building was built in 1939 and was damaged five years ago in Hurricane Katrina. Uh, Spiewak Preservation Consultants is hired to bring back the beauty of the 1939 facade uh, by washing down and uh, cleaning the exterior limestone and repointing all the mortar joints. We're uh, working with the architect and the owner on a historic masonry restoration plan, including the training of the masons in order to do this and accomplish the goals. Instructor John Spiewike discusses strategies for joint removal tools and techniques with participants. During this opening session, the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation is studied and discussed in detail with specific reference to each worker's responsibility to comply with the standards. In addition, the project specification requirements are reviewed for the work of this section. When you bury that, you're going to be at an inch and three quarters. So you're in, you're in quite deep. We don't have to go in that deep. We only have to go in an inch, a little over an inch. If you go in the full depth, when you break it off, the whole joint's at least an inch deep. Yeah, that's what we have. We have to end up at an inch. So as we do this... Workers demonstrated precision at using the 5-inch Hilti grinder to place a center cut down the middle of the mortar joint, the center cut method. This process of first cutting the center of the joint allows operators some flexibility and helps to eliminate operator error during cutting. These mortar joints contain evidence from previous repointing campaigns as the edges of the original stone have been damaged. The depth of the mortar joint removal was established at one and a quarter inches from the surface of the wall. This represented two and a half times the width of the mortar joint. The remaining cement mortar is now removed by hand using a hammer and a five-in-one chisel. Rinsing the cleaned out mortar joints with water using a garden hose was the last step in the mortar removal process. Workers are expected to carefully examine the center cuts of the cement mortar joints after using the grinder and rinsing the joints free of debris. That's good. Can you mix that horse? Nah, dude. The mortar is mixed to a consistency of stiff brown sugar as shown on this mason's hawk. The dryness of the mixture enables the material to be packed tightly into the joints. This procedure keeps the work clean while eliminating the potential for shrinkage cracks as the mortar cures. It is the responsibility of the contractor to obtain the necessary tools and equipment to be able to accomplish this stone treatment and the details of this training. These participants are completing the written testing required for component number three, lime mortar repointing. Each participant received hard hat stickers that related to the component of the training that they completed. In addition, each participant received a certificate that was issued at the end of the training. 